glory to God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you in Jesus' name. On behalf of my husband, Pastor Brian, and myself, we love you with the love of the Lord. We bless God that you tuned into the Hewitt channel. My name is Evangelist Anita Hewitt. Our ministry is MCN Ministry, Bible Way LA. We're located in Los Angeles, California. And if you need more information, please visit our website at www.brianhewitt.com. And if you want to seed into this fertile ministry, for truly we're going to the four winds of the earth. Next month we're going to the UK and it's exciting how God is opening doors for us to go minister all over Europe and I to God be the glory so if you want to seed into this ministry please click on the donation button and if you want to write a check please make it payable to MCN ministry let's go before the throne most gracious Father, we come before you right now, Lord, in the matchless name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. First of all, forgive us for all of our sins. Strengthen us where we're weak, Father God. We thank you and praise you, Father God, that this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for every blessing that you have for us this day. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for having a teachable spirit, Lord Jesus, receiving your word today. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that not one word shall fall upon death ears but it shall accomplish that it was sent to do father god we thank you and praise you right now lord hallelujah for what you're doing hallelujah in our families lives in our co-workers on our jobs lord we thank you lord jesus for being jehovah jireh you're the god that provides father god we thank you lord jesus for opening doors and no man can close closing doors and no man can open now father god i thank you that anita will decrease and you will increase in me use me to your glory lord in the name of jesus father god we thank you in advance for souls to be one lord in the name of jesus father god we thank you lord jesus for enlightenment of your word today father god give me clarity of speech and thought lord in the name of jesus and father god we thank you lord jesus for the anointing for the anointing is the only thing that will destroy the yoke the anointing makes preaching easy and father god we just thank you and we praise you for all the many 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 blessings you have for us this day in jesus name amen amen god bless you saints of the most high god hallelujah it is truly a blessing i'm excited about sharing what the word of god has placed in my belly i need for you to get your bible or get a pen or a piece of paper we're talking about understanding god's love too many times we think we know what love is because we're grown now and I know that I'm in love and I know you know but what type of love does the Bible talk about what type of love does God have for us or my question to you is what type of love do you have for God and we're going to talk about the different types of love because there are different types of love so we're going to dive into the word we're going to three books so please get your pen and a piece of paper the first one we're going to is John 12 I'm um, excuse me John 21 15 through 14 I'm reading from 15 through 17 oh my goodness John 21 15 through 17 I'm reading through the Amplified Bible glory to God and when they had eaten Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my lamb. Again, he asked him the second time, Simon, son of John do you love me and he said unto him yes Lord you know that I love you he said to him shepherd my sheep or take ten ten my sheep this is the Amplified Bible verse 17 and he said unto him the third time Simon son of John do you love me Peter was grieved that he would even ask the third time do you know do you love me do you do I love you he said unto him 
Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. My God, turn with me to 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For the love of God and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. It was a song we used to sing when I first got saved back in the day, and we would sing the scriptures. And and this song is, and, and how we sung the scriptures was it kept us always focused on the word. And it was a it was a catchy tune for us to know the scriptures. It goes, Beloved, let us love one another for the love of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. And it was such a catchy tune. You just you just did this. So when the Lord had gave me this message, I started smiling. I was like, God, I remember this. So therefore, we're talking about understanding God's love. I want you to turn with me to the last reading. Glory to God. Then we're going to come back. We're going to put it all together. Glory to God. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we all know it as the love chapter. But I want to ask you a question, saints of the Most High God. Now, we say that this is the love chapter, but is there a difference between love and charity? Or is it the same? Too many times we've been taught it's the same. But it is different, and we're going to talk about that. Glory to God. So, 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to read the whole chapter. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and know all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I have nothing. And though I bestow my goods and feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity, long-suffering, is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vanish not itself is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly seek not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoice not in iniquity but rejoice in the truth beareth all things believe all things hopeth all things endure all things charity never fails but whether there be prophecies they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there shall be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But that which is perfect is come. Then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake like a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I, put, when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I will, now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I'm known. And now abided faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of God's holy word. My God, I want to know 
what this love is all about. How can God love me in the state that I'm in? I want to know this type of love. I want to know God's type of love. Now, I've tried the other types of love, but it still left me void. It still left me empty. And, I, you know, I, I feel hurt, you know, because I loved and they didn't love back. And I loved and they played on me and they broke my heart and they talked about me. And it doesn't have to be only in a relationship, but we're talking about a friendship relationship. I loved my best friend, but my best friend used me and stabbed me in the back and so therefore I want to know about how to love because I just don't know I think I know how to love but because of you know the world's definition of love is different it's the difference between night and day of what God talks about the type of love so God I want to understand your word God I want to understand the type of love you have for me so Let's go to the first scripture that we read. So we're going to John 21, starting at 15 through 17. Now, prior to this, this was when Peter had denied Jesus three times. They were, they were out at the beach. Well, I'm going to create the sea. They were at the sea. So, it was, so they just got through catching something to eat. So they had eaten, and Jesus turned to Simon Peter and said, Son of Bojona, or son of John, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, I love you. Now, the question, the type of love that Jesus was talking about, he was talking about that agape love, meaning self-sacrificing, like I love you more than I love myself type of love. But, but Peter said, yes, God, I love you. And the way, the type of love he was talking about, it was called filio. That's the type of love that's a friendship love. So therefore, when God said, do you love me? When Jesus said, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your friends? Do you love me? Do you love me self selfishly, unselfish love? Do you love me? Agape is I love you regardless, who you, regardless if you change or if you never change. I love you. My love does not change. So Jesus had asked Simon Peter, he said, do you love me? That type of love. And Simon says, I love you. Like, you know, you're my good friend. You know, I love you. You're my close friend. You're my homie, Jesus. I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then the second time, Jesus came to him and said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And this is and this is a type of love as of one loves the father. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter says, Yes, Lord, I love you. I love you again, like my close friend. I love you like my homie. You know, we cool. God, me and you, we cool. So Jesus said, Take tend my sheep or shepherd my sheep third time Jesus came to him and said Simon son of John do you love me by now Peter was grieved he was he was he was upset he was sad and he was hurt because he understood the third time what type of love he was talking about but yet his response isn't it amazing his response was still at the filial type love i love you as a close friend i love you as my buddy i love you but so therefore jesus then simon says lord you know i love you lord you know all things lord i love you so Jesus turned around and said, feed my sheep. Isn't it amazing that Jesus knows how to get all the way down to the core of our emotions? Now, my question to you is, if Jesus came to you and said, do you love me? Would you respond with that type of agape love? Or would you respond as a filial love meaning that a close friend type of love and only you could answer that my god 
So I want to understand, understanding God's love today. I want to understand the type of love that God has for us. God loved us before we were unlovable. God loved us when we were stinking in our sins. God loved us. The Bible says when we were yet in our sins, Jesus died for us. Don't you know God said, I love you even, even when you don't love me. But I know one day you're going to turn around and say, Jesus is Lord. One day you're going to come to me and you're going to follow me with all your heart, my body and soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you have that type of love? Hallelujah. Or is your love conditional? I love you as you love me. I love you. Though it's the same way you treat me. You treat me bad. I'll treat you bad. Is that type of love or... Or do you have that unconditional love, that agape type of love that God wants his children to have, not only just to God, but to our brothers and sisters? We still got to love. We got to love unconditionally. We got to look beyond the faults and see their need. The need is that we need to be strengthened in the word of God. We have issues and we need to be strengthened. And the only way we can be strengthened and delivered is only through the word of God. So do you love God, this unconditional love? Do you love God, the agape type of love? Or do you love him as a good friend, as a filio type of love? That's a Greek word called filio, meaning that I love you as a close friend. Now, if you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, then you say, well, you know, Jesus, he's a good man. He was a prophet, you know. No, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. That there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. We baptize in Jesus' name according to Acts 2. 238 Peter the same Peter said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost hallelujah so therefore we're talking about that type we're talking about Jesus we're talking about the type of love that God loved us so much he died on the cross so that we would not be lost so if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior if Jesus cracks the clouds right now can you honestly say heaven is your home and if you cannot say heaven is your home please turn with me to Romans 10 9 through 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there's no difference between Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is over all, is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Aren't you glad you tuned into the Hewitt Channel today for you to hear this awesome word of God? God, I want to know your type of love. I want to understand the love that you have for me, God. I need that. I need that type of love, God. I want to know you ever so more so please repeat this prayer after me dear god i admit i'm a sinner i need your forgiveness i believe that jesus christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins i'm willing right now to turn my sins and accept jesus christ as my personal lord and savior i commit myself to you and ask you to send the holy spirit into my life to fill me and take control help me to become the person you birthed me to become thank you father for loving me in jesus name if you said that simple prayer all heaven is rejoicing pastor brian and myself we're praising god for you welcome to the body of christ you've taken the most important step now you ask god to lead and guide you to a bible teaching church where he wants you to grow and be strengthened and also also get active in the midweek Bible study and also the fellowship for, for where there is unity there is strength so once again welcome to the body of Christ and if you gave your life to the Lord please visit our website at www.brianhewitt.com and let us know that you gave your life to the Lord and if you need a Bible please let us know that too and we will make sure that you get a Bible once again welcome to the body of Christ glory to God and if you want to see it into this ministry please visit our website at www.brianhewitt.com click on the donation button if you want to write a check please make it payable to MCN ministry you will truly be blessed once again let's go back to understanding God's love so therefore we just got through talking Simon Peter he was upset because Jesus had asked him 
three times, do you love me? And all three times, Simon Peter responded, as for, I love you. You're, you're my homie. I love you. You're my close friend. I love you. So, do you love God with the agape type of love, the self-sacrificing love, the unconditional love, or do you love him as, oh yeah, he's okay, you know, he's good, he's my friend, you know, me and him, we tight, me, JC, we're, we're tight, Jesus Christ, not JC, you know what I mean? So, what type of love do you have, do you have that affilio love, that friendship love, or do you have lord jesus you are my everything god i love you more than i love myself i love you more than i love my husband my kids my people places and things god you come first god you are the first of my life god i love you i love nobody could feel a spot that i have in my heart for you and you only hallelujah glory to god too many times we say we love but we love conditionally i love you as long as you treat me right i love you as long as you respect me i love you but when but but when you start not treating me right or you know you talk about me and you hurt me and uh yeah i'm gonna hurt you back what type of love is that do you have that type of love like that toward jesus my god and only you could, could answer that the word of god is here to find us so therefore let's turn to first john 4 7 and 8 beloved let us love one another for the love of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love we're children of love and because god is a god of love and we are his children we must walk in love and the commandment is that we must love one another there are so much more than 10 commandments so there are commandments from genesis to revelation saints of the most high god let me give you that so therefore this is a commandment that we must love one another because we love one another because our father is a father of love and we're children of love we must love one another amen amen so now we're going to go into talking about charity charity and love is two different things love comes from the heart love is emotional charity is giving self-giving i'm giving i'm giving to i'm giving to the need i'm seeking whatever they have need of so therefore he said even though i speak with tongues and of angels and have not charity i become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal meaning that if i meaning if i could preach like a mad woman slay the whole church just in my shadow hallelujah wave my hand and the whole church go down but if i don't care about god's people i have nothing it's a sounding brass, a tinkling cymbal, something that just makes noise, just irritating. But I can preach. I have the gift of preaching and teaching. I have the gift of laying hands. I, hallelujah. I, get, I have the gift of healing. Just wave my hand and you're healed. But if I don't care about, if I don't have that charity, if I don't have that self-giving, want to love you, charity, hallelujah. See, love and charity, love is emotion. Charity is self-giving. Charity is giving, doing what you can do. Though I, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, hallelujah, and though I have faith to remove the mountain, not move it, but remove it wherever I want it to be moved, but have not that giving, have not that charity, I have nothing. Though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, hallelujah, and though I, you know, bestow my goods to feed the poor, though I let my body to be burned, but if I have not charity, it profits nothing. In other words, am I just going to say, oh, look at me. I fed 5,000. I fed 10,000. And look at me. And But I really don't care about them. You know, you know I just went on and did it because it's a tax write-off. Do you understand? If you do not have charity, it profits nothing. God looks at the motives of our heart. He pulls the reins of our heart. So God knows. So therefore, if we don't have charity, now let me tell you what charity is all about. Charity is long suffering. Charity is kind. Charity is, charity envies not. Charity vanish itself. 
it doesn't puff up himself. I'm not thinking I'm all that and a bag of chips. I'm not, you know, it says charity is uh, suffers long, S meaning that I don't have a chip on my shoulder. Soon as you knock the chip off, I'm ready to go there. That's not charity. Hallelujah. So we must ask God to work on us. Hallelujah. Find us right where I right where we are and work on us and fix us. Hallelujah. Charity does not behave himself unseemly. Glory to God seeks not her own, not easily provoked, not quick to go there, thinking no evil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I knew that Brother Pepperhead was like that. Mm -hmm. I knew Sister Sugar Pepper was like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. No, that's not charity. Hallelujah. It does not act unseemly. Hallelujah. The things we used to do, we don't do anymore. The things we used to say, we don't say anymore. Why? Because Christ Jesus is in us. Hallelujah. The Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. My God. Hallelujah. So I'm not easily provoked. I'm not quick to go there wherever your there is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice not in iniquity. Iniquity means wickedness. I'm not happy that my brother and sister fell into wickedness, but I rejoice in the word of God. I rejoice in truth. Hallelujah. I rejoice when God brings my brother and sister up and out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endure all things. Hallelujah. We got to endure things like a good soldier hallelujah we're going to go through but god gives us that endurance for us to go through god said we can do all things through christ which strengthens us hallelujah so we're strengthening the word of god charity never fails hallelujah when you have christ jesus in you hallelujah and glory to god god is using you you're going to be godly concerned about god's children you want to help hallelujah i want to do whatever i can do whatever my hands could do if it's just for me to call the saints and say i love you with the love of the lord let me pray with you glory to god is there anything that i could do glory to god that's what charity is all about hallelujah charity is self-giving hallelujah it's not no longer about bless my four and no more it's all about the kingdom of god hallelujah but whether your prophet see hallelujah it shall fail whether there'll be tongues it shall cease whether there'll be knowledge it shall vanish away for now we know in parts and we prophesy in parts but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in parts shall be done away when i was a child i spake like a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things hallelujah is not talking about the age he's talking about spiritual maturity when i was a baby glory to god in the lord hallelujah i was on the sincere milk of the word hallelujah and i spoke like a child hallelujah and i understand the word like a child hallelujah but when i became mature when i grew in christ jesus when i waxed strong in god's word i can't no longer go back to god and say god i didn't know hallelujah because i've been strengthened in the word of god hallelujah when you're a babe christian you you drink the sincere milk of the word. And then as you mature, you wing yourself off of the milk and you get into the meat and the steak and the potatoes, as my husband and I say. Hallelujah. And then you start going deeper, higher heights and deeper depths in Christ Jesus. So now I can't go back to saying, Lord, I'm a baby. I don't know about that scripture. Oh, God, I didn't know about this. Hallelujah. Because I put away my childish things glory to God for now hallelujah we see through a through a glass darkly hallelujah but then face to face hallelujah now I will know in parts but it shall be known even as also I am known glory to God hallelujah everything will be clear hallelujah when the 
Savior comes, when we see the Lord face to face. But in the meantime, hallelujah, I'm going to be busy doing the things that God has called me to do. Now abide in hope, faith, hope, and charity. But these three, the greatest is charity. So charity and love are two different things. Saints of the Most High God, I want you to understand, hallelujah, we have always been taught 1 Corinthians is the love chapter. Glory to God. Yes, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But glory to God, charity is self-giving, and God is self-giving. He loved us so much, he gave himself. Hallelujah. He stretched his arms out wide. Hallelujah. And hung his head and gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it didn't stop there. In three days, he rose again. Hallelujah. So the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is going to raise up our mortal bodies on that great and wonderful day. Saints of the Most High God, so I'm here to tell you, understanding God's love. God loves you. Hallelujah. And if nobody has told you that you are loved, hallelujah, Pastor Brian and Evangelist Anita Hewitt, we love you with the love of the Lord. Glory Glory to God. Let's pray out. Most gracious Father, we come before you right now, Lord, in the matchless name of Jesus. Father God, we love you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for you loving us. Father God, we love you with the agape type of love, that self that self-sacrificing love. Father God, you come first. And Father God, forgive me if I have not put you first. I've been putting people, places, and things, and situations, and life circumstances before you. But today, God, now that I heard the word, I'm putting you first, Father God. And forgive me. Lord Jesus, you said confess your sins. Hallelujah. You're faithful just to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us all day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word, Father God, that shall not that has not fell upon deaf ears, but it shall accomplish that it was sent to do. Father God, we thank you for those that gave their life to the Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that our faith has risen just a little bit higher in you. And Father God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, for there's none like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Saints of the Most High God, tune back in at 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time where I come back and I'll be preaching and teaching whatever the Lord has placed on my heart to give. And right at this moment, I also want you to tune back in at 6 p.m. My husband, Pastor Brian, he'll be preaching from the book of Revelations. Get ready to be blessed. So until we meet again, may God keep you and bless you richly. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.